Kart Toyota Atlantic Championship. Today, Valiente and 15 other aspiring open-wheel jockeys take to the streets of Southern California in the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. It was here one year ago that number 19 proved his medal to all, executing a pass that most thought impossible and the rest thought unbelievable. Now in the shadow of the Queen Mary, a grand lady of the seas, the royalty of the Champ Car Ladder System continue the 30th anniversary season of the world's most prestigious development series. Write it down, no event in motorsport has been more blessed by Mother Nature than the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach, site of round two of the Toyota Atlantic Championship for 2003. Hello everyone, I'm Bob Barsha along with Brian Till. Calvin Fish is in the pit lane and after two days of dire weather forecasts, as you can see, we have clouds in the sky, but we also have bright sunshine and a light breeze blowing across Shoreline Drive as the field makes its way around its warm-up laps. On row one, A.J. Allmendinger, his first career pole, start next to his teammate, Aaron Justice. Well, Aaron Justice has proved his ability as a race car driver before. He won the two-liter Formula Ford Championship in the year 2000. This is his first full season, the Toyota Atlantic Championship. Brand new team, and starting from the front row and only your second race. Got to be a lot of pressure, Aaron. Not really. And we got here, the car is just right, love the facility. Something about being here in California, I'm feeling pretty good. On row two, Scotsman Ryan Dial has had a great run of top finishes. He'll be starting alongside Mexican Luis Diaz, who was disappointed in the season opener. Speed has never been an issue for Luis Diaz. It's been the start. This year from the pole in Monterey, things didn't go his way. And last year here at Long Beach, well, they certainly didn't go his way either. So, Luis, as you race down towards turn one at the green flag, what are you going to be thinking? Well, I guess this year I'm going to try the inside line. I'll be watching some videos from last year, and I hope no more crashes this year. On row three, two of the podium standers at the end of the season opener. Jonathan Macri finished second. Michael Valiente won the race. On row four, Alex Biggie starts next to rookie Mark DeVellis. Moving to row five, Stefan Waugh makes his seasonal debut, starting next to Danica Patrick, who was third in Monterey. On row six, Alex Garcia will be next to Kyle Krizilov. On row seven, Eric Jensen and rookie Dan Selznick. And on row eight, Joey Han, who was the pole sitter at this race last year, qualified eighth, but has gone to the back of the field with a chassis change. He'll start next to Philip Bayer. In the season opener at Monterey, Han and his GST Pete chassis were checking out when a mechanical problem relegated him to the pits before the race was over. And there has been more problems for him this weekend. With more on that, here's Calvin Fish. Well, Bob, Joey Han was certainly home to rebound from that disappointment in Monterey with a strong run here in Long Beach. He's the defending pole sitter here, having claimed that position last year, but it's been anything but smooth running for this DSTP crew. In Saturday morning's practice session, the car actually caught fire. An electrical problem had the guys working frantically to get the car back on track, but the bigger problem has been the car has not been quick. Joey's about 1.3 seconds off the pole, and that's meant that they made a big decision last night. They've switched to the backup car. That means that his grid times are thrown out. He'll start from the back. Look for a charge from Joey Hand. And this is a very difficult track to charge on. Take us around, Brian. Well, Bob, every Atlantic driver wants to win here at Long Beach. Long Beach and Montreal are the places you want to win in one of these cars. Passing places, turn one and turn nine at the end of the long back straightaway. But turn one is the issue. you got to get through it at the start, and it's always a problem. You can see just how narrow it is. It is also very bumpy. We'll check our onboard cameras. One will be carried by Danica Patrick, who made history in the season opener as the first female driver to stand on a Toyota Atlantic podium. She'll be in the house car from Argent Mortgage, a sponsor of today's race. Also carrying an onboard camera, number 33, Luis Diaz, who will start P4 when we get underway. There are the two yellow cars of the Roosport teammates. Dial is in the red, number 28. And now they swing onto Shoreline Drive through the famous hairpin. We expect the green flag, and then keep your eye on turn one. There it is, J.B. Wilbur gives him the the green, and this is where your heart almost stops. Down to turn one, Danica, what a great start she's got. Hold on, guys, here we go. Look at the scramble up ahead, here they come. The two Roosport teammates, Almendinger and Justice. Macri looks inside. Oh. So tight through there, but so far so good. On board with Diaz, Patrick gets him. 
Oh, he may get shuffled out as they make their way around the Fountain Center for the first time. Danica Patrick got a tremendous start. She's improved several positions. A.J. Allmendinger holds that position in the lead, and Aaron Justice, his teammate, slides in, but Danica Patrick was the winner on that start. Now they'll swing through the left at turn six and onto Pine Avenue. Through here, everybody just wants to get some temperature in their tires. It's a relatively cool day. The cars really aren't working that good right now, so you've got to really be careful. But it is a hard racetrack to pass on, so anything you can get at the start is a benefit. Side by side. Oh, little brake lock up there from Kyle Krisilov. Look at Almendinger check out. You know, one of the things the guys have said about him all weekend long is on cold tires, he's willing and able to run hard from the beginning, and that's what we're seeing. He's been able to pull out a little bit on his teammate. Calvin Fish. Well, Danica Patrick made a storming start there, and they really struggled with the car all weekend, Bob. A lot of understeering the car. They're running very light on downforce. Bobby said, we think we've got a handle on it. We're hoping to make a strong impression here. But talk about the Rose Sport team. Some big sigh of relief down there. They've got their two boys on the front. They, they hope they get through turn one cleanly, and they made it through. That they did. Almendinger in just his second career Atlantic start from pole position leads Aaron Justice, then Jonathan Macri, Ryan Dial, Mark DeVellis made a huge jump going from eighth to fifth on the first lap. Danica Patrick is sixth. Then Michael Valiente, the defending champion, Luis Diaz, Alex Figgy, and Alex Garcia round out the top ten. We'll be right back to the beach. Coverage of the 30th anniversary season of the CART Toyota Atlantic Championship, the elite of the Champ Car Development Ladder, is being brought to you by Toyota. Get the feeling. Who invites you to visit the Toyota Atlantic Championship website at www.toyotaatlantic.com. Welcome back to the streets of Long Beach. There is A.J. Allmendinger, last year's Barber Dodge Pro Series champion. And as you mentioned, Brian Till, the cars are beginning to come up to speed every lap. These guys have been going faster. Almendinger's last lap, a 117.8. Two full seconds and change faster than his first lap. Oh, yeah, and almost one second faster. Actually, 1.1 seconds faster than the second place car. It was his teammate Aaron Justice. And we talked about the fact that A.J. Almendinger is so good on cold tires. When you jump out there and you get that advantage over everybody else, that advantage then stays from lap after lap. you got to take it when you can get it. He's very good on cold tires. You get a good look there of Aaron Justice, followed by Macri and Ryan Dial. And those guys, Macri and Dial, have been fast throughout the second qualifying session and in this morning's warm-up. Aaron Justice seems to have lost a little bit there. I know that they wanted the car to get a little bit faster, but they may have taken the wrong tack. So they've gone back to a setup that they feel is a little bit better, but it cost them a little bit. And it looks like Macri and Dial, oh, that's, oh. Macri blocks the out down to the inside, and Aaron Justice is looking at his mirrors going, thank you guys, because look at the gap. He's been able to pull out over Macri. All of these cars using the same four-cylinder Toyota engines, and all of them are on the same Yokohama Advent Racing slips. To Calvin Fish. Well, one man who was sweating turn one more than the drivers today, Bob, was this man, Carl Russo, car owner of uh, numbers three and four. Carl, looked like the boys really behaved themselves down there. Uh, it was a great start. They got off to a good start. The cats off to the whole field. I mean, the whole field got to the 30 years of racing at this facility. This is a historic event without a good clean historic start. Right, congratulations. Great start for this team. Two young Chargers, first time here at Long Beach. They lead the field, Bob. Aaron Justice ran three Atlantic races last year as a teammate to Carl Russo. Now he is driving for the man. Here's the battle. Two, three, Macri, and four, Ryan Dial. As they head for the hairpin. You can see the gap that Justice has been able to pull out on Macri a little bit. The more that Macri and Dial fight amongst each other, where Aaron Justice is able to pull away. That battle has settled down a little bit between third and fourth, and Macri's working his way back up to Aaron. Aaron's hoping that Ryan Dial charges a little bit harder. Let's pick up the next car in line. There goes Michael Valiente, and here's Mark DeVellis. Now, I mentioned that DeVellis in that red car went from eighth to fifth at the start of the race, but officials ruled that he jumped Valiente at that start, and he was ordered to let the defending race champion back around. So they now run Almendinger, Justice, Macri, Dial, Valiente, and DeVellis. Yeah, well, when you get your foot in the throttle before the green flag comes out, it's easy to pick up positions. The nice thing is they gave him the opportunity to rectify it on the racetrack and not take care of it with a black flag or any type of a penalty. And certainly DeVellis was willing to give up one position on the racetrack and should have come in the pits and serve a stop-and-go penalty. 
On board with Diaz. With the right-hander onto Seaside Way, past the, stuff, the front of the convention center. Right out to the wall, you see, using every bit of racetrack around here, you got to. He wants to stay close enough to get the draft on DeVellis in front of him, the long straightaway there, and if he can get into that slipstream of the car in front of him, it's gonna help. If he can get close to him coming through the hairpin, he may be able to make a move down in turn one. Look at Figgy. Alex Figgy has been fast through a lot of preseason testing, and there's Joey Hand. He's worked his way up to 10th place already, and he's got Danica Patrick in his sights in front of him. But don't forget, Joey Hand is still not happy with his car, basically starting all over again this morning by going to the backup car. Whoa, we have a spinner down in one. Is that DeVellis? Oh, contact. Oh. That's that going to be DeVellis and Diaz. You can see damage to Diaz's right front tire there. That car is not in al alignment anymore. It's damaged. He shouldn't be able to continue. And I think De DeVellis has the same problem. Now, keep in mind, Diaz had all those problems in the series opener in Monterey. Macri inside Dial. Dial spins. Sitting there in the middle of the racetrack. One car gets through. He starts to move. DeVellis comes through. Uh, it was actually Valiente who got through, I believe. He'll be to the right of your screen. Macri's through, De uh, Dial rolling slightly. There goes. Valiente gets through. Oh, uh, right tough call. Order. Yeah, DeVellis goes for what he thinks is the gap. Dial obviously wants to get out of the way, but uh, Diaz may not have damage. I, it could just be these, these cars have Ackerman steering, which means as you turn the wheel, one wheel turns more than the other, and it could just be the steering on that. He may not have damage. He's been, looks like he's gotten back underway. Yeah. He may be okay. He's cleared the scene. You can see it in his hands from the onboard camera. As soon as he saw Ryan Dial sitting stationary on the racing line, he has tried to avoid the wreck. As you just saw, he is back underway. We'll take a break while we're under a full-course caution in Long Beach.